Well, if you want to make the playoffs out west, you cannot have a long slide. The Spurs has it, had issues early in the season. The Clippers are in a bit of a lull now. Both of those teams fighting. Hold on to their spots in the standings. Welcome to Game Time. Chris Miles here with Sekou Smith, Mike Fratello. Great to be here with you this MLK weekend. The Clippers were in first place in the Western Conference standings on December 4th. They entered Sunday in eighth place. It's hard to maintain out west. Clippers look to try to stop their five-game losing streak in San Antonio against the Spurs team with the second-best home record out west. DeMar DeRozan back after missing Friday night's game at Minnesota. Just 4-16 from the field, eight points. On the other end, Tobias Harris leading the way. Tobias Harris was simply uh, sensational. Uh, just a guy who carried this team on his back, winds up making open shots, and he did much more than that. He wound up defensively doing a really good job helping them come up with loose balls, helping them come up with steals, interceptions, which got them easy buckets. Patrick Beverly also with 18 points for the Clippers. They're ahead by 10 when LaMarcus Aldridge, that L.A., doesn't mean he's playing for the L.A. Clippers. It means he's LaMarcus Aldridge, the man working inside for the Spurs, Sekou. Yeah, and when he plays big, the Spurs have opportunities they don't otherwise have. It's just a fact. He and DeMar DeRozan both masters of the mid-range, and when he's got it cooking, you got to watch out. 30 points, 14 rebounds for LaMarcus Aldridge. Clippers building on that lead in the third quarter. This is Marco Bellinelli hitting a long two for the Spurs, cutting that deficit down to eight. One of those keys, the three-point shooter, Bellinelli. And Rudy Gay, 19 points, eight rebounds, makes it a five-point game. Into the fourth, it's Tobias Harris. Came into this game struggling a bit over his last couple. 17 points in his last, averaging 17 points over his last three games. Scored 27 in this one and a career high nine assists. Closing this one out for the Los Angeles Clippers who snapped their season long five game losing streak, the 103 95 victory. When you put up stats like that for Tobias Harris, he's the one doing the interview after the game. So Tobias Harris just one rebound, one assist away from triple double. Also, three steals are. He was incredible for the Clippers. When you look at some of the stuff that he did outside of just making shots, you realize that this was a total contribution for him. Watch the steal, and now watch. Decision-making time. Pass it? Uh-uh. I'm going to take on all three of those dark jerseys and convert. Clippers come up with a rebound, get it to you-know-who, Tobias. Does this look familiar right now? Three more black jerseys back there, but once again, he takes it right to the rack. Now they run a little play where they come back at the end and screen down on him, get him behind the three-point line. He knocks that one down and to show that you want to stay on top of him. They'll throw it over your head, get inside, muscle it up, and one. Harris giving you a little bit of everything. And Tobias, he gets a lot of the acclaim and well-deserved for the Clippers, but Danilo Gallinari now out for them. Who else is stepping up in, in really providing a spark? Well, guys, I think it's been a, a group effort all season long for these Clippers, the different guys at different times. But it's hard to ignore the contributions Avery Bradley makes to this team. Such a subtle, you know, fantastic fit on this team from a defensive standpoint, Coach. Undersized, you would say, against a guy like DeMar DeRozan, but he's such a pest. And at his size, with his athleticism and timing, he gives them a, a guy who can get underneath a bigger two guard like DeMar DeRozan. The other part about it is don't sleep on Avery Bradley's ability to knock down shots and be a potent player on the offensive end. He did that in Boston, did it on a regular basis in Boston, became a very important part of what they were doing. Now he's doing the exact same things for the Los Angeles Clippers. I think Doc realized the importance of this game after losing five straight. When you look at the starters, three of the five played in the 40-minute mark, 41, 43, 45, in that area. That's a lot of minutes right nowadays with the way teams are playing. And we came into this show talking about the Clippers and how that five-game losing streak has cost them in the standings. Now it's the Spurs who have lost three of their last five. DeMar DeRozan in that stretch not looking as great as he looked early in the season. And you see his shooting really an issue for him right now. Should the Spurs be concerned with the way that DeMar DeRozan's playing, especially sitting out a game with a sore ankle? It's a long season, and you have to factor in there's a, a, an adjustment period that any player would go through, Coach, you know, being inserted into a different system after all these years, having to learn all of the nuance of that system. And also, teams are getting a chance to see him maybe for the second time around now in a Spurs uniform. 
So they can now attack him differently than they were earlier in the year. How about the ankle, too? Think about DeRozan's shots. So many of those where he's pushing off on one leg, they get that shot off. That could be part of the reason. Well, Lonzo Ball also suffered a recent ankle sprain. Grade three against the Houston Rockets last night and will miss the next four to six weeks. The Lakers point guard has started 45 games this year, averaging just under 10 points, five rebounds, and five assists. Victor Oladipo got his first All-NBA nod at the end of last season. His Pacers are holding strong in the East. We'll hear from him next on Game Time. All-Star Game coming up. Let's take a look at fan voting so far. Oh, look out west. Derrick Rose, Luka Doncic leading the fan votes over recent MVPs, James Harden and Kevin Durant. In the East, Dwayne Wade might be the biggest surprise. He's currently second Amongst guards, the 37-year-old, of course, is a fan favorite and is retiring at the end of the season. Recently, some current players told us who their all-time starting five would be. You want to start a fun debate? And now, the starting lineup. All-time starting five. Oh, all right. Uh, it's tough. Uh, it's super tough. Uh. Too many to choose from. Well, that's an argument you could get from east to west. To Nixon and Lowe, the green swing left, the right hand sky hook of 12 is good. I think that's what the fans came to see. MJ. Oh, Curry did it. Runs it into a team. He got it. I don't think I can pick five to do it justice. You gotta go by position. Magic at the one. I'm going with Magic. Magic at the one. Magic Johnson. Magic for sure. Magic Johnson. Did he make a miraculous shot? Yes. Has he ever done it before? You bet he has. I wanted the uh, Steve Nash would be my one. Kyrie Irving at the one. Jordan at the two. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. MJ. Mike. Michael Jordan be a two. Got to go with MJ. Jordan to the circle. Puts the shot in the air. I go Kobe at the three. Kobe Bryant. I'll have to go with Kobe. I would say Kobe. I'm probably go with Kobe on the other wing. I got LeBron at the three. LeBron James. LeBron. LeBron James. At the three, I'll probably say LeBron. LeBron at the four. LeBron at the four. I gotta put the, the big fundamental in there. Tim Duncan. Probably Tim at the four. Timmy D at the four. Birdman took a oh. shot and Duncan throws it down over. I'm going with Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley. I'll probably go with my boy uh, KD at the four. Let's say Malone. Come on. The Dirk at the four. Dirt. Hakeem Olajuwon at the four. At the five, I'll say Will. Will Chamberlain. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Hakeem. Five would have to be Shaq. Gotta go with the big fella, right? The run out to Shaq. I got Shaq to kill on there. Shaq. Shaq. Shaq at the five. And the debate will continue. That's a list I gotta really think about. I can't say start at six. Well, the starting six sounds I like, like a really interesting idea because all-time starting five is different than the top five discussion, right? Because you're factoring position and fit and just guys you want to pick. So Sekou will allow you to go first. Well, I agree with a lot of those guys. I don't think you can start a team in this league or in this game without Magic Johnson at point guard. To me, that's just a no-brainer. Michael Jordan, the GOAT, as my two guard. Or if we're going to play positionless, why don't you give me KD and LeBron at the forward spots? And then give me the guy who I think cradle to the grave, coach, the greatest player in the history of the game, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar holding down the middle. Well, I, I like a lot of the people on your team. I would hope so. I, I think they probably could have a decent game against our team. <laughs> okay, because... Decent? Star, who you got to beat his team then? Well, let me explain something to you. Everybody's thinking about small ball and shooting threes. I'm going the other direction. I'm going to beat everybody up and then never get an offensive <laughs> rebound. And we're getting, if we miss a shot, 
We're getting all kinds of offensive rebounds, but I want you to see my team, which is a special oh, group of guys. Oh, wow. Okay, you see my group out there? You got Shaq. You got Chamberlain, you got Bill what? Russell, you have Kareem, and I borrowed Tim from the power forwards to bring the ball down the floor. We're playing 2-3 oh. zone. We're switching everything. If you decide you're going to foul us, put us on the foul line, we might be a little shaky at the foul line with that group, <laughs> but you're going to have to foul us so many times, your players will be left <laughs> in the game to play against us. So watch out for my team. Coach, we're not playing in the backyard now. We actually got to play a, a real game with Come referees. Come out and play against us. Show up. <laughs> our guys will be there. So show that up. Is, that is incredible because, <laughs> Seku, I kind of anticipated that. So you're playing Shaq at the five, right, I'm hoping? Shaq can play wherever he wants. <laughs> you know, wherever he wants to be. Kareem at the four. Wilt at the three. Timmy at the Tim's at Bill Russell's running the point? T no, t Timmy's my point guard. He, <laughs> he can handle a little bit. But we'll just pass it up. We'll just throw lob passes up the floor. That's true. Positionless the basketball right there, Chris. That's that is that is positionless basketball at its finest right there. That is a phenomenal. And, and I didn't tell you my first two subs, by the way. Okay, Akeem Olajuwon, <laughs> and then Moses Malone behind him. Those are the other two coming off. Just to let you know. I mean, you you can at least have a shooter like Dirk Nowitzki. I got Steph coming off my bench as my sixth man. So we're gonna get some shooting on the floor as soon as we run. As soon as we run these big boys, you know, tired, get them tongues Look, out. Look, this Jordan over. We're gonna get the lights fellas. out. Okay. You guys are in trouble. No debate. Jordan to shoot another uh, over no another big fella. Right we only no get four shots every time we miss at the basket. <laughs> Remember that. So yeah, no point guard love. For I'm just going big. Wait, Magic's a tall point guard. I'm going big. I Coach got my guys. Big, going big. going home. And, and when we get our hands on them, they're going to be going home. Simple as that. Mm. Say who is thinking his team's going to win. That'll be a tough one. I think uh, you'll have the wins in the post. You'll have the wins in the perimeter. There are 11 NBA games on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Start your day with us here on NBA TV. Knicks and Thunder take the court at 1230. And it's a triple header on TNT, concluding with the Warriors and the Lakers games let's say it one more time mm. he's averaging 40 over the last 21 that last loss against the Nets Harden scored 58 he scored at least 30 in 18 straight games he'll look to continue that streak against the Lakers tonight at eight what's been most impressive about what he's doing uh I think being in shape if you see, mm. we, that, that sounds okay. too easy what well, what you have to, and Boozer, you know this, yeah. you have to be in a certain kind of shape to put these kind of numbers up every night. I remember Tracy McGrady said it one day with, with Paul George, when you become that next level superstar, your legs have to be in a certain type of condition because you have to do it every night. It was like we were teasing about Kuzma, he got the 42 and he kind of fell off for a couple games and he mm -hmm. got back hot again. He was like, wow, it is hard to get 42 every night. So now when you watch James Harden do it, you're like, oh my goodness. Yeah after coming back from an injury this season to get his legs back in his condition to perform the way he is. And what's even more impressive to me is that, think about it, he's the number one thing on the paper when you're trying to stop the Houston Rockets. Right. And he's still putting up these kind of numbers. That's, it's very impressive what he's doing. Well, Mike D'Antoni says Chris Paul will return sometime next week. This week, the Rockets also lost Clint Capella four to six weeks following thumb surgery. So how much of these injuries are starting to mount up for this team that makes Harden's run even more ridiculous when you're considering he's not getting help from other guys? Yeah, he's carrying the load, man. I mean, obviously, with CP being out, that hurts a lot. Capella being out, especially with rebounding and someone that dives to the hoop gets the easy lobs and alley -oop dunks. Um, it makes James Harden job that much more harder but he's doing it he's performing he's carrying that team he's getting some help from Eric Gordon you know Gerald Green's playing very well other guys can step up as well but it's pretty much all on James Harden's shoulders yeah defensively it's going to be interesting to see how they play good team defense without Capella offensively James has proven he can hold down the fort to Chris Paul gets healthy but now with Capella, who's going to be that rim protector? Who's going to get those big rebounds he was showing us this season? Well, that's an interesting question because according to multiple reports, Kenneth Fareed right. is that guy. Now, here's a thing that's just hmm, concerning about him. He's played 44 games mm -hmm. over the last two years, and he's not hurt. Why is that? Because he hasn't been in Brooklyn's uh, rotation or, should I say, plan. He wasn't in Denver's plan. Once Jokic and Nurkic came on, we talked about in the meeting, he had just got that big contract. He, said he saw the writing on the wall. 
He gets to Brooklyn. Kenny Atkinson said he's just not a part of the rotation. So that's what happened. But I will give him credit. He hasn't complained. He hasn't been a bad apple in the locker room. He's been going about his business. Now he's about to get bought out and possibly, you know, go to Houston to all the conversation. If that happens, he will bring energy. That's how he made his name in his NBA, of running the floor, getting loose balls, rebounding, setting good screens, and rolling to the basket. And speaking of situations, you're a guy that understands – it depends as a big – what your situation is for him to play with a guy like James Harden. Look, Mm -hmm. he's averaged 13 points in his career. He's averaged nine rebounds in a season in his career. Can he get back to that form? He's still just 29. Well, Houston's going to hope he does. He's very young. He's very fresh. He doesn't have a lot of miles on his his legs right now. And the hope for Farid is, like like 3D said, he brings energy. There's always always room for a guy that brings energy and effort. And if he can continue to run the floor hard, set good screens, roll to the hoop for alley-oops, play good defense, rebound the basketball, he could help that team out. Keeping with our theme of teams missing their key players, there's none bigger than one LeBron James for the Los Angeles Lakers, (laughs) right? Well, they come into tonight against Houston riding a two-game win streak. The Lakers actually 5-7 and overall without LeBron now. That includes wins in four of their last six. Of the young Lakers who seemingly are growing through this experience over the past couple of games, Who's growing the most to you? Kyle Kuzma has been cooking. Uh, You look at his numbers throughout this stretch, 26 points, 7 rebounds, playing very well. Me and 3D talked about last night with you, Chris. He plays downhill. He's he's a runner. He takes advantage of his opportunities. He shoots the ball from a pretty solid clip from the three-point line. He makes his free throws. And he's getting more consistent. And that's the big Mm -hmm. thing for for me with him because he can pick and pop. He can roll to the hoop. On defense, he can play the 2, 3, to 4, sometimes the 5, depending on who's who he's going against. So for him in his second year to be averaging 19 points and doing what he's doing, trying to hold that fort down offensively, doing a great job. I think for that OKC game was was Alonzo Ball for me. And to hear him say that I'm playing with more confidence, I'm playing more aggressive now that LeBron's on the floor. He's used to having the ball in his hand. So I'm saying to myself, guys, if Alonzo can play with this type of aggression and this type of focus and this type of confidence when LeBron comes back, then LeBron can say, okay, maybe I can take this quarter off because I know Zoe's going to do all the right things to keep things going. If I come out the game, we're up 10. I come back in, we're up 14 because Zoe is playing confident basketball. That's what I like when I saw the OKC game. All right, focusing on this matchup, the Lakers have also lost to the Rockets twice, and that's with LeBron, mm-hmm. and that's by an average of 12 points. All right, and James Harden scored 50 the last time Oof. these two teams went head-to-head. Can we expect the Lakers to be able to compete in this one, Chris Paul out, Clint Capella out, that's different. But can they compete against James Harden, the better one, the way that they're currently constructed without LeBron on the court? Well, I think what Luke Walton will try to do is, is to tap in what we saw in the OKC game the other night. The question is, when James Harden gets cooking, does your enthusiasm get taken out of you because now how do you slow him down? Mm-hmm. You know, on the flip side is you have to get some stops to get some easy offense to get your confidence going on the offensive side of the ball. I think something else I like that they did the other game was where they had Ingram playing the point, almost like yes. a point forward. Yes. That helps them offensively get guys involved, make plays for each other. So we'll probably see more of that tonight. LeBron will be cleared to practice next week. Lakers have Golden State on Monday, Timberwolves on Thursday, the Suns on Sunday. When you look at those games and you think of LeBron coming back, when do you foresee him being able to get back on the court if he's just now starting to practice on Monday? Uh, it- Knowing LeBron, boo, you've been around him before. If LeBron really wanted to play, I think tomorrow if he had to, he would. Over but on the I think there's being smart just to make sure. So a practice or two, and if LeBron said he's ready, then he'll be back on the floor. Yeah, LeBron's done a great job with his body. As you guys know, he barely ever misses any games, as we've mm-hmm. seen throughout his career. Um, I'll leave it up to him. You know, I think it's one, if I'm one of his teammates, he knows his body better than anybody else at this stage in his career. Does a good job of taking care of it. Works out every day. And when he's ready, he'll be back out there. And when he does get back out there, the winds will start going like this. And if you you go this, right, because the Lakers in the standings, they were doing this before Mm -hmm. their recent uh, win streak, winning four of their last six. Does that take the pressure off LeBron to come back when, okay, the young guys are handling this right now, they're staying afloat, they've won four of six, as opposed to, oh, wow, we're falling, we're almost out of the playoff picture in the Western Conference? I think it's the other way around where when things were struggling, it might have been some pressure that maybe I come back a little sooner. They win a couple, 
And now I want to get back now while they're playing well to feed off the good confidence mm. and the good play versus they're struggling. It's like, LeBron, come save us. Mm -hmm. No, now we found our stride. Now we found our confidence. Now come back to your yeah. point. Oh. Now let's really ride this gotcha. road and go that way. I think he's looking at it that way. Yeah, I agree 100% because now these guys have stepped up. Kuzma's playing better. You know, Alonzo Ball's playing better. Ingram's being a playmaker and doing more things. Then you bring LeBron, who's an MVP candidate, back into the fold and gives them a chance to get even more boosted, hopefully climb a little bit up in this, in this Western Conference standings. That makes a lot of sense. It'll be interesting to see how the Lakers perform tonight mm -hmm. against the Houston Rockets and how they look when LeBron James comes back. Certainly something to be excited about. Russell Westbrook in 